You don't mind my sister or brother for the worry here. Happy preparation day. Happy preparation day. I just put my grandbaby down for a nap and I hear her up. So I don't want to cut this off, but just hold on a second. Hold on a second. So here we are. I put her down about 15 minutes ago, and I guess she did one of those power naps. So with that, my sister and brother, I tell you, you never can tell, right? Right? So good morning. Good morning. Yeah. No, here, up there. Uh-huh. Okay. Man, it's caught in my dress. See? So good morning. Good morning. Okay, my sister and brother. So happy preparation day. Happy preparation day. We are talking about the Sabbath, talking about uh, in Genesis, not Genesis, Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11. God to remind us to remember the Sabbath day. So preparation day is the day that you get ready for the Sabbath. Get your clothes all iron. Get the food all prepared. The house all clean. And then when the sun sets today uh, until tomorrow, it's a 24-hour cycle. So Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the Sabbath hour. And it's a 24-hour cycle. And God <laughs> asks us to remember his day, my sister and brother. That's the day that we go to church or whether you do home church or you go out and uh, doing ministry. That is the day. It's Saturday, and it was never Sunday. But you can go ahead and Google who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday, and that would be the system. I'm not talking about the people, because God got his children in all these different denominations, and what he's doing is calling them out of that false system. He says Babylon is fallen, is fallen. It's a false system, and the false system has to collapse in order for Jesus' second coming. So let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Right now, Father God, I ask you to decrease me so that you'll be increased. Allow our Holy yeah. Spirit, Father God, take full control. I thank you, Father God, for hearing, for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So scripture reading is coming from Job, Job chapter 12, verse is, let's see, Job 12, verses 9 and 10. Yeah, Job 12 verses 9 and 10 and it says who knoweth not in all these things that the hand of the lord has wrought this in whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind may the lord add a blessing to the reading hearing and the doing of his words So let us get into our devotion. Yeah. Should I put this over on this side for you? Let me put it over on this side. Yeah, let me put it over on this side for you. Hold on. Just in case you need it. Is that okay? Is that okay? Maybe I should bring this back over here. 
since I have you know so I want to bumping into the door is that better okay so let's get into our devotion and our devotion is how to learn from nature its deepest lesson how to learn from nature's deepest lesson and it says while the children and youth gained while the children and youth gain a knowledge of facts from teachers and textbooks let them learn to draw lessons and discern truth for themselves in their gardening question them as to what they learn from the care of their plants as they look on the beautiful landscape ask them why god clothed the field the fields and the woods with such lovely and ver and variety and ver uh, varied colors why not no let me go back why was not all colors uh a somber brown meaning uh a dark brown so let me let's put this word in there why not all colors a dark brown when they gather the flowers lead them to think why he spared us the beauty of these wonder wanderer from eden let me repeat that when they gather the flowers lead them to think why he spared us the beauty of these wanderer from eden teach them to notice the evidence everywhere manifested in nature of god's thoughts for us the wonderful adaptation of all things to our needs and happiness those alone who recognize in nature their father's handiwork who in the richest and the beauty of the earth reads the father handwriting those alone learn from the things of nature their deepest lesson and receive their highest ministry only those who can fully appreciate the significance of hills and valves and river and sea who looked upon them as an expression of the thoughts of god a revelation of the creators many illustrations from nature are used by the bible writers and as we observe the things of the natural world we shall be in a it shall be enabled under the guiding of the holy spirit most fully to understand the lessons of god's words let me repeat that hold on let me repeat that are you going back to sleep you want this are you going back to sleep let me see if you're situated okay you're going back to sleep Okay, let me go back. I'm trying to see where I'm at. Okay, many illustrations from the nature are used by the Bible writers. As we observe these things of the natural world, we shall be enabled, we shall be enabled under the guiding of the Holy Spirit more fully to understand the lessons of God's words. It is thus that nature becomes a key to the treasure house of the word. Let me repeat that. It is thus that nature becomes a key to the treasure house of the word. Children should be encouraged to search out in nature the objects that illustrate Bible teaching and to trace in the Bible a similitude drawn from nature. They should search out both in nature and in holy wits every object representing Christ and those also that he employed in illustrating truth. Thus may they learn to see him in trees and vine and in lilies and rose in sun and star. Thus, they, thus may they learn to see him in the trees, the vine, in lily and rose, 
and sun and star. Damien learned to hear his voice in the songs of the birds, in the siding of the trees, in the rolling thunder, and in the music of the sea. Every and every object, let me go back, and every object in nature will repeat to them his precious lesson. To those who thus acquaint themselves with Christ, the earth will never more be a lonely and desolated place. It will be their father's house, filled with the presence of him who once dwelt among us. Let me repeat this. This is so beautiful. To, to those whom thus acquaint themselves with Christ, the earth will never more be a lonely and desolated place. It will be their father's house, filled with the presence of him who once dwelt among us. So that concludes my devotion, my sister and brother, how to learn from nature its deepest lesson. So we got to go into the Bible, my sister and brother. If we go in the Bible, we compare what's going on in nature. We can look at the nature. We can look and say, oh, this is what they meant. So my sister and brother, nature is our deepest lesson. We can learn so much from nature. And if you have the book also, Education, it's, this is coming from page 119 and 120. So that concludes my devotion for today. How to learn from nature the deepest lesson. So it asks us to, children should be encouraged to search out in nature the object that illustrate Bible teachings and to trace the Bible, the similitude drawn from nature. So my sister, brother, everything that we do, we need to be pointing out different lessons, whether the children are watching a movie or they're out in nature or they in the store, you can point out something uh, from the Bible and then can do some comparison. Well, you see this, this is a beautiful flower. Who made the flower? Ask them questions so they can, um, how would you say, could, could, um, could understand the Bible and what's going on in nature. Because everything speaks, so nature is our, is the book that we need to learn from my sister and brother. And then compare the Bible and the nature. I mean, can you imagine those two powerful um, lesson book lesson lesson? You could draw a lot of, you could draw draw a lot from the Bible, the stories, and look at nature. Nature can teach us a lot of lessons about the. How would you say the uh, beauty of God? How marvelous is our God? How. I would just say, how beautiful. Can you imagine the beauty that he left here? You could go on the highways, the byways, you see all these wild flowers. You wonder, who oh, watering those flowers? And you see the birds in the air. They come down when you're watering, and they come for water. They're looking for water. They're looking for food. And the state, God asks us, he says, well, you look at the birds. Do you think they worry about what their next meal coming from? No. When you look at the lilies, look how beautiful they are. Do you think they're worried about somebody's going to cut me down? No, my sister and brother. So God give us enough trials and tribulation for one day, for one day. So we don't need to think about, oh, what is going to happen tomorrow? Mm. He gave us just today enough for one day. So there's a song, remember? One day at a time. Sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking for. One day at a time, my sister and brother. That's all God giving us one day at a time. So remember, I think I'll go ahead and find that song and put it on there. That's one of my songs I always go go to, go to one day at a time. Because sometimes we need to be reminded that God just gave us one day. One day at a time, right? And so then we won't be so stressed out thinking about, oh, I got to do this and this is happening. And what am I going to do tomorrow? How am I going to pay this bill? What? You know, stop, my sister and brother. Stop. You got a heavenly father. He says, I own everything. Have you talked to me? Have you talked to him yet? Have you asked him for what you want? He said, I am more than willing to give you what you need. 
just ask me. But he knows, right? We say, well, he already knows what I need. Why don't you just drop it here, right? <laughs> no, God asking you to ask him. He knows. But he said, ask me, you know? It's like you got your, your child or your grandchild say, uh, Grandma, I, I'm hungry. Or Grandma, I need this. Oh, Grandma, look, look, I hurt my, I hurt my knee, right? God wants us to be his best, be his best friend. And so we can tell him everything we're going through, everything. And guess what? When we talk to God, he keeps your secret. You don't have to look in the newspaper and say, oh, or you go to church and you hear the pastor, what you told the pastor, he's, he's, um, he's making some examples out of what you told him, right? No. God keeps his secret, my sister and brother. So you can tell him everything. He knows everything, right? But you can still he still wants you to talk to him. It's just like us parents, we know if the child makes this turn or that turn, it's going to hurt himself. But as parents, we still have to let them do right. When they get to a certain age, we still have to let them do they have to explore for themselves. They you know, it's crazy, right? Kids want to have their um, own experience. It's like you had your own experience and you were bumping your head against the wall by trying this and doing that. And your mom or dad or parents told you, don't do that. You're going to get yourself hurt. You're just like, well, I want my own experience. And they have the nerve to say that too. <laughs> I want my own experience. And it's like, I am telling you, if you take that road, you're going to get, you're going to get some, you're going to get hurt, right? But God tells us that in his words too. Sister or brother, if you take that road, you're making a wrong turn, making a wrong turn. Do a U-turn, do a U-turn. So the Bible is full of stories that people made the wrong choices and some did U-turn and some did not do the U-turn or some did not have an opportunity to do a U-turn. So right now, my sister, brother, you have an opportunity to do a U-turn, right? If, you're, if, you're, if your life is not according to the word of God, do a U-turn. It's not late. It is not late. And remember, our children, grown children, all we can do is pray for them, my sister and brother. Continue to pray and fast for your children, your loved one, that they too will make a decision to follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. Yes, we do bump our heads, but we know that we have a loving Father. He understands, but guess what? Jesus is in the most holy place right now, interceding on our behalf. But guess what? He won't be there that much longer. Yeah, he's getting ready to come. And so in a little while, we won't have a mediator. So we need to get it together now, my sister and brother, and ask him, pour out our heart to God and say, Lord, I've done this, I've done that. Please forgive me, please forgive me. And Lord, give me the power to continue this Christian journey. I know that the road is rough, Father God, but I know that you will take me through. Why? Because I've surrendered my life to you. That's all God asks us to do, surrender, and he will do the work through us. That's it. He's just looking for an empty vessel that he can fill. You know, it's like you go and get your water mug um, on jar, and when you finish that, then you want to fill it again. That's all God is at, empty. You know, we got a lot of garbage in. God said, empty, and I will fill you. I will fill you. That's all he asks us to do. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. Thank you for my sister, my brother that stopped by here today. Father God, you know the trials and the tribulation that each and every one of us is going through, right, Father God? But we just thank you, Father God, that you are God, that we could just come and lay all our burdens at your feet. All the stuff that's stressing us out, Father God, we can just lay it at your feet. And knowing, Father God, that you have here and that you have answered, Father God, and we have asked you for the power that we need in this last day, Father God, to stay on the right path. And if we are on the wrong path, Father God, we ask you, Father God, for the power to do that you turn so that you will take full control, that we will give you permission to take full control. Father God, if we have said anything today that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, we ask you to wash us and make us whiter than snow. And Father God, we'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we thank you, Father God, for hearing. We thank you for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
Okay, my sister and brother. Well, my grandbaby went back to sleep. <laughs> you see her? She went back to sleep. And sometimes she just wants to be held. She just wants to know that someone is close by. Right? So she went back to sleep. So praise God, praise God. So with that, my sister and brother, I love you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to reach with us, you and your family. But before you go, let us do the four hugs for survival. We know that there's four hugs for survival, there's eight for maintenance, and then there's 12 hugs for growth. But we are only going to do the four, four hugs. So here we go. Let me see if I can do that. So one, two, three, four. I thank you, my sister, my brother. Thank you so much. Have a super awesome Sabbath. And those of you that's already celebrating the Sabbath, happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath. I tell you, there's no, there's no, no day like the Sabbath. I tell you, I look forward to the Sabbath. And uh, for me, I um, prepare for the Sabbath uh, from Sunday. So when the Sabbath ends on, Friday, on Saturday, sundown, Sabbath ends, right? We know sundown starts a new day according to the Bible, but man went ahead and changed it to midnight. Mm. So I still celebrate the Sabbath. Um, so from Friday, sundown, Saturday, sundown. And so when sundown, Saturday, I get ready and I start preparing for the next Sabbath. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So you have six days to prepare for the Sabbath, my sister and brother. So don't wait until the last moment. I usually on Friday, I try not to do too much because things usually, you know, comes, um, extra stuff usually come um, not planned. So I usually try to not put too much on my Friday, on my Friday. So, um, yeah. So have a happy Sabbath. Uh, my sister and brother and tomorrow i mean i won't be here tomorrow but you know it's almost it's so great um topic tomorrow is like nature teaches the value of obeying okay let me go back nature teaches the value of obedience to law obedience to law you know god has laws in everything right there's laws for everything so we just got to be obedient, obedient children, brother, uh, sister, brother, so we don't be bumping our heads, you know, bumping our heads and getting scars, uh, getting scars. How many more scars do we need? <laughs> How many more scars do we need? I guess enough until we get, get our lives together. Oh, I should say, till we surrender. So with that, love you. Appreciate you until Monday. Monday, be blessed and take care.